If you're trying to improve your mobility and reduce pain, no doubt you've tried a bazillion exercises. And it can be quite confusing because which ones are best for you? Do you need to stretch those tight hip flexors? And that's the only way that I can move better. Whoa! You see folks, as a physical therapist of over 10 years, who's worked in professional basketball, as well as people with chronic pain, almost all of my patients and clients gloss over the basics. It's like trying to go keto when your diet consists of mac and cheese and gummy worms. There's some other fundamental things that you should probably try first before you go to the fancy stuff. There's really about five moves that I am starting most of my patients and clients with. And if they nail these, more often than not, it takes care of a bulk of the issues that they're running into. And they set up the stage for a lot of fundamental movement strategies that you should be able to do when you progress to the fancier moves. The first move I start most people with is some variation of the calcaneal traction roll. You see, most folks are limited in ankle motion, especially ankle dorsiflexion and eversion. These movements are necessary to put force in the ground. If you can put force into the ground, that can allow you to expand and gain motion in the more proximal or upper segments. You wanna start in the half kneeling position. The working leg is gonna be the front leg. You wanna take the outside hand. So if my right foot's in front, I'm gonna take my left hand. The web space is gonna go behind the ankle bones and grip the heel on either side. What you wanna do then is you're gonna traction down so you kind of want to move your arm downward this is going to help gap the heel joint from here you're going to lean back that's going to create even more space silently breathe in through your nose you want your weight to transfer to the outside heel without lifting the foot up so it's going to go to the outside heel on the inhale on the exhale you're going to transfer your weight to the inside heel making sure the foot stays flat and you don't tip the foot outward. You don't wanna see the knee wiggle or anything like that. The most common screw up that people make when doing this is driving way too much motion. Your subtalar joint, which is the joint that we're working on, only has about five degrees of eversion, which is when you are getting your weight on the inside heel. I usually go two to three sets of 10 to 15 reps her side, and I would mess with that move for anywhere from two to four weeks before moving on to something more advanced. The next move is the foam roller decompression with overhead reach. Most people, if they have an inability to rotate throughout their body, have increased muscle activity on the front side and the back side, and this limits your rotation. With this move, we're going to use gravity to increase the front to back dimensions, and then lying on the foam roller is going to promote that even further, so that way you can improve your rotational capabilities. You're gonna lie on your side, have the foam roller be on the middle third of your rib cage. So not the armpit, not the lower ribs, right in the middle. You're gonna lie down on the foam roller. It's gonna be a little uncomfortable, but you should be at the point where you are weight bearing mostly through the foam roller. Bottom leg, not at 90, just a little bit less. The top leg is going to be right in front of the ankle like so. The first thing you wanna do is look out into the horizon. You're gonna silently breathe in through your nose, on the exhale, think about melting down into the foam roller. You're not gonna side bend like this. You wanna drop straight down. Most of your weight bearing should be at two points, the foam roller and then the outside knee. If you can't get the outside knee, what I would do then is put some sort of pad or pillow underneath your hips so that way it tips you more forward. Now that you've got those two points, you're gonna take your top arm. You got two options. You can either reach that way, so like I'm gonna try to grab the wall, or I'm gonna reach up towards the ceiling like so. I would do whichever is more comfortable. From here, making sure you stay melting into the foam roller, you're gonna silently breathe in through your nose. On the exhale, you wanna slowly reach your arm at about a three out of 10 effort, pace it with the exhale. What you don't wanna do during that reach is take up all the slack and side bend. Once you get that initial reach, you're just gonna hold this position and breathe. If you do the one that's going overhead, same thing, silent in through the nose, exhale, subtle reach to the ceiling. If you wanna add a little extra sauce and improve your rotation, go ahead and look up at your hand. I would do three to five rounds of five breaths per side with this move. Again, this is another one I would do two to four weeks before you try any other rotational mobility move. 
The third move is decline prone on elbows. Many folks have increased muscle activity on the front side of their body. Think pecs, think rectus abdominis. And what this can do is it can create this type of posture, which is more slouched, with the head forward. Having this posture isn't inherently bad, but what it can do is it can limit range of motion in your shoulders. So with this move, what we're gonna do is if I have this person right here, I'm going to take some pads, I'm going to put those pads underneath the lower ribs, so that way the lower ribs relatively get pulled back, and then gravity is going to allow the front of the chest to drop forward, which can open up the chest. You're gonna to wanna to get two thicker pads or like three pillows. You wanna put them underneath the lower ribs and the stomach, not covering the chest. Arm position. You wanna have your elbow crease at about mouth height. If you're someone who doesn't have much external rotation, I wouldn't go really wide. I would get a little bit more vertical. If you do have a lot of external, but you're limited in internal rotation in your shoulders, then I would go a little wider. What you're gonna do is you're gonna look right at your thumbs with your eyes, feel your weight on the inner parts of your elbow. You're gonna silently breathe in through the nose. On the exhale, you wanna stay heavy through those inner elbow points in the lower ribs. Think about adding weight to those points, not necessarily like pressing down like this. You'll notice that your chest and your head come up a little bit, but you're not gonna force this. You wanna keep even heaviness or weight through the inner elbow points and the lower ribs. I would do this move five sets, five breaths, two times a day for two to four weeks. You'll notice that most of the sensations in those moves are subtle. And that's really what we want in the beginning. If you're limited in your mobility or you have some discomfort, chances are you have a lot of increased muscle activity and you want to learn to dampen down the amount of muscle activity that you have. If you can do that, it's gonna increase your overall motion, which can improve your comfort. But now, we're gonna get into the challenging stuff. The fourth move is hook line breathing. With this one, you're going to be feeling the hamstrings working and a little bit of abs. It's a really good move for improving your hip mobility and working on connecting some of the foot range of motion that we worked on earlier to pelvic dynamics. Lie on your back with a ball or a yoga block between the knees. You wanna make sure that there's three points contacting the ground. The first is your PSIS. This is the bony part that's just above the pelvis and kind of like right Right below the lower back, that should be contacting the ground. If you notice that it doesn't, you don't wanna rock your hips back. What's a better move is to raise the feet up, and that way it's just going to passively get those points to contact the ground. From here, you wanna also feel the inside heels and the base of the big toe. You're gonna to keep even weight distribution between those points, and you wanna gently put weight into the ground through those foot points. You don't want, during this, to lift up, because if that happens, you're gonna lose the PSIS contact, you won't get the hammies going. Make sure as you do this that your feet don't tip in to do it. It's a straight down press. From here, you're gonna silently breathe in through the nose. Exhale, think about getting heavier through those foot and back points. You're gonna to wanna to do five sets of five breaths two times per day with that move for again, two to four weeks. And the last move is the wall squat with low reach. This is a really good move to drive posterior expansion. If you can create expansion through the backside of your body, it'll open up rotation. Most people have a tendency to shift forward. That limits rotation. If you can shift your weight back, that will increase rotation, which will improve your overall mobility. What you'll wanna do is you'll wanna be about your foot length away from the wall. Put a ball between the knees. You wanna keep your weight on, again, the PSIS, and then those same points on the foot, the inner heel and the base of the big toe. If you can't get the PSIS up against the wall, you don't wanna round your back to make it happen. What you're better off doing is dropping down just a little bit until those points contact the wall. From here, you wanna maintain even weight distribution between those points. It's okay if your lower back is off. As you breathe through this, that may naturally come down. You're gonna look out to the horizon. If you get it right, you're gonna feel your quads work and maybe a little bit of the glutes. With the arms, you're gonna bend your elbows like so. Keep them kind of close to the body. Silent in through the nose. Exhale, just slowly, three out of 10 effort, reach the elbows towards the ground. Make sure as you do this reach, you don't whip into place, slouch to get into position. The elbows don't come up or you don't straighten them. It's really just reaching the pointy parts of your elbows softly 
towards the ground. And with that move, I would perform five sets of five breaths two times per day for two to four weeks. It's a really good move before you go to any standing activities. Now, it's pretty common for a lot of people to make mistakes when they're doing various breathing and mobility exercises. If you want to avoid those mistakes and get results, I would check out this video right here where I outline common mistakes people make when they're doing breathing exercises.